two, one. All right, everybody, welcome back to Building Better Business. I'm incredibly excited to introduce my guest to you guys, Justin Saunders. Uh, Justin is someone that I, I really look up to. He's somebody who uh, has actually been a coach of mine in the past. Uh, really taught me a ton about uh, advertising, Facebook advertising. We've even uh, had uh, paid Justin to do consulting for us on, on some of our ad campaigns. And so, Justin, I'm super pumped to have you here. Yeah, me too, Will. Thanks for thanks for having me on here. I love doing these and I always love hopping on with calls with you and just providing value in any way I possibly can. Yeah, man. I, I love it. I, one of my favorite things about you, Justin, is you're just super real. I think we, uh, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, just people you meet who you're like, are they who they seem to be? And man, you're, you're one of those people who um, you've built an incredible, like, you know, image as well, or personal brand is probably a better way to say it. Like, dude, your Instagram is huge. You, you've grown so much. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you wonder just from afar, you're like, wow, is this person like, you know, down to earth? And then I get to meet you. And I was like, man, this is one of the most real people I know. So dude, I'm, I'm super pumped. We're going to dive into, uh, you know, kind of what you're doing now with the Instagram strategy. But I, I've been asking uh, all of our people when we start, Justin, uh, now that you've been in business for a while, did you start out as an entrepreneur? Meaning, did you have any entrepreneurial tendencies? Were you that business oriented kid going around with like a lemonade stand? Or is this something you came into later in life? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I think I, I look back on it and I definitely had like those lemonade stands like growing up. And I think, you know, my mom kind of probably forced me to do that just to get outside the house and just do some stuff. But it really started when I was growing up because my my parents, my dad was a mechanical engineer and he was like a co-founder of a company. And my mom had, and my dad had like a real estate thing on the side, but I'd wake up and see my mom go and like, just be able to control her own schedule. And sometimes when I would like, you know, play sick from school because I just didn't want to go, I'd see her just, you know, go to like, like manage her own schedule. And like, I knew I always wanted to do something like that. And that's kind of like, I guess, you know, as Napoleon Hill always says, like, you got to plant that seed of what you want. I didn't yeah. know that this is what it was going to be, but it started growing and growing. And remember there was one time in high school, I was like, dude, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do, but the term consultant sounds really cool. And then it started growing more and more. And then in college I got, um, you know, I, to be honest with you in college, like I just went to college to party and network and have fun. So after about like three years of partying, it kind of just hit me. I'm like, I, I can't do this the rest of my life. So I got this um, this position at this um, company where I learned how to sell print and digital ads. And this was like before like digital advertising was like a huge thing. It was kind of like that transition. Yeah. And I remember just like after I sold my first package of it, I was like, well, one, I can actually sell this stuff. Two, I started seeing everybody around me. Like every time I was on a bus, I remember everybody was just scrolling on their phones. So I started using that in my pitch. And then eventually that company ended up just going selling digital only and I went my separate ways because like, well, if I can learn how to sell this or I can learn how to fulfill on this instead of getting 10% of a commission as a college kid, which at the time, a couple hundred dollars was all I needed. I was like, well, I can make a hundred percent of this and like start something out of it. So that's kind of how like the thousand foot overview of the entrepreneur, like planting the seed kind of grew to where I was. And I really think if you're a big Napoleon, Napoleon Hill fan or anyone else, like they always talk about like having that burning desire and like that that seed that's growing. And even if you don't know where it is, eventually it all starts sprouting. Yeah, dude, I, I love that. I didn't even know that that part of your journey, man, of, of in college of having that experience of um, talk about cool timing, because that probably you're right, was probably around the turn of, you know, Facebook, Instagram advertising, just really starting to, to take off. And if I remember right, dude, the last time, one of the times we talked, you, you didn't go out of college right into like starting your own business or advertising. Did you work, if I remember right, you you worked a, a job somewhere or am I making that up? So that was kind of my job. Um, I yeah. went straight, it was my senior year. <laughs> I'll never forget, man. Like I, because I, I was in a fraternity and like all we did was party, right? Like that's all my friends did and everything. It was fun, but I'll never forget. Like there was one time, it was like my second paycheck from that company. I was like, all right, dude, I'm tired of just wasting, like going to the bar and just wasting this paycheck. Like let me try something with it. And I got targeted by, it was this, there was two ads I was seeing all over. It was Ty Lopez and this other sketchy guy that the guy, I'm not going to say his name because he's in jail now. It ended up being like a big scam, but I had like $300 left to my name and I bought that sketchy dude's ads or his um, course. And it taught me like how to run ads. And I was like, well, 
uh, we'll see what happens. Everybody, I thought it was crazy at the time. Like, dude, you just got scammed, which to be honest with you, like looking back on it, I think that course, like he had headphones in, I think he was just reading off of another course as he was presenting it. But I got the information. And the one thing that he said that always stuck with me is like, dude, if you can learn ads, you're going to be set for the rest of your life. And that's what I did. So I didn't make any money with that. Went and got another paycheck and then bought the Ty Lopez course. And then that's when I started the agency. Okay. So you, you started the agency uh, right out, pretty much right out of the gate. When was this like time-wise? This was, uh, let's see, like 2017. Okay. So about five, six years ago now, you know, recording this 2023. So five, six years ago, will you, will you walk us through the first kind of, I don't know, year of business? Like you're, you're going into this, I'm assuming, I know you had parents who obviously had, uh, you know, your dad was a, a co-founder and your mom was in real estate. So obviously seeing business like operating, you know, around you, maybe not, you know, being pulled into like financials and stuff like that. But did you, that first year, what was that like your transition from, you know, uh, being in sales and then, Hey, you're in charge now of lead generation. You're in charge of all the selling, you're in charge of all the fulfilling. What was that first year like for you switching over to business ownership? Oh man. It was the, uh, the best worst time of my life is the way I like to describe it. It's um, because if I go back to like when I was in college, I was pledging and that's what everybody says. Like when you're pledging a fraternity, it's like the best worst time of your life because it's so much fun, but it sucks at the same time. And that's how it was for business because I had like really bad shiny object syndrome. So I was trying everything, dude. I was, I was doing the agency, but I was also trying to do like, get into like Forex, Shopify, drop shipping, all this stuff. And like, I had like a little bit of success in each thing. And I remember one day I was, um, I forget what happened. I was talking to, I think I sat down with, cause I was telling my mom, like, I, I, cause I had no money at the time. I was like, I got to figure out something because I can't, I can't live. And she's like, all right, well, sit down to this real estate guy that I know because I was a little bit into real estate and just talk to him. I was like, all right. So I sat down with him. He offered me a job to work with him. And I was like, I immediately was like, Hey man, like I appreciate it, but no, like I, I got to do, I got to figure this out on myself. And I remember going home that night and I wrote down every single thing that I was doing, which was like um, agency, Shopify, um, <laughs> Forex, um, real estate. It was like five different things, man. I remember just crossing them off, crossing them off, crossing them off. And the thing I circled was agency because I was like, this is one, I know how to sell Two, I'm almost there on delivering. So I just went all in on that. And then that was like the next, like, I think I was in agency for probably like four, four or five years, give or take. And then I started slowly transitioning into the consulting side because I just really like working with people like yourself and just giving the advice that I've learned because at the time, every single dollar I was making was going back into a coach, a consultant just to learn. And like, dude, I remember I got started roughly with like $42 with my, in my name and had like $40,000 in debt and just like, just went through and was like, I know where this tunnel is going to end yeah. and putting your head down is like the best decision you can make when you first get started. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that, that honesty too, man, that the, yeah, I think there's a, you know, misconception that, I don't know if it's a misconception. It's an easy thing to fall into where I'm going to invest in myself when I have money. And, you know, it's kind of like saying, you know, I'm going to take a risk when there's not a risk. It's like, yeah, well, that's not really a risk. Then that's just like you doing a normal thing versus when you're, when you're taking a, you know, investing in yourself, even when you didn't have the money, you know, I think that just speaks to how committed you were, right? Like that's, that was the thing that you were going to make it, you're going to make it happen. Um, just for the people who are listening to, uh, Justin, for context, where did you start to niche down on the advertising side? So I'm assuming, or did you not? When you started out, were you trying to go broad? Were you, hey, anybody and everybody? Uh, were you focused in on a specific niche? How did you end up growing the agency? Was it around one or two specific niches? Was it anybody? Curious how you, how you kind of went about growing it. Yeah. So at first it was, I just wanted to learn. I said yes to every opportunity. And you know, a lot of people say don't do that at first, but I think for me, it was probably the best decision because I learned a lot of different angles of marketing. And after I had about 10 clients, I um, was like, all right, it's time to niche down, focus on one industry. And that's when I went um, all in with chiropractors and then chiropractors turned into stem cell clients. And we started growing that um, up until like the point of like when the world shut down due to, you know, good times with COVID. Um, 
and that was just like the end of that because we had, I think we had like a hundred active clients at that point. Like we grew pretty fast and everybody just shut down their businesses and everything. So we had a pretty rocky road then, but then after like that transition, we came back and went into solar and grew that thing up really fast. And then that's when I hit kind of like that burnout phase I was talking to you about before this, um, which was literally a little over a year ago. And I just shut down because I had like, I had the agency, I slowly was going into consulting. I had some other investments going on and stuff too. And I just hit like this burnout phase. I was like, man, like I just took like four months off just because I stacked up good cash. I was like, I'm just taking four months off, figure out what I want to do sold the agency to my business partner and then just went full in on my consulting program, which is authority income accelerator now. And like, I was telling you, man, like that was this, I feel like I'm finally aligned and it took me six, seven years, whatever it was to actually like go through all this stuff to really figure out what I want to do in life and like, feel like I'm passionate about what I'm doing and just like love what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm, I really appreciate you kind of sharing that fact too. Like, I think there's a, you know, uh, sometimes we see people online and just assume they had it figured out from the get-go. And I think deep down, we know that's not true, but you, you know, you're mm -hmm. like, man, is, am, is there something wrong with me that I don't have it totally figured out when I see somebody else who looks like they have it, you know, figured out right away. And I think that's a great lesson too, for people who are, maybe you've been in business for, you're listening to this, you've been in business for 10 years and you just don't feel aligned with what you're doing. You feel, you know, uh, pulled to something else. And I, I want to dive into that with you because I, I think it's pretty real. And, and for us and, and what we do with CEO Finance Academy, we come with, we come across so many owners who reach out who are like, is this even worth it? Like we're talking like profitability, they're putting in so much time and energy and they're not taking home any more than they would. So I'd love to to kind of go through this with you of how did you end up making the decision to go from agency to consultancy? We'll dive into, because I want to dive in a minute to, uh, uh, you know, Authority Income Accelerator. Uh, how did you make this switch from the business model that you were used to, right? To done for you, you knew you could fulfill on that into the consultancy side. We have a lot of online business owners who are listening, who are probably marketing agencies, agency owners who are like, oh man, that consulting sounds great. I don't even know how to make that switch. How was that process for you? Yeah, I mean, it was something that was like a, it was kind of like slowly building up. Like I had the agency in, I was really big into automations and delegating myself. So like that agency was running by itself, you know, for probably a solid like six months without me having to do much other than like three calls a week with the team, just manage. Right. Yeah. And it was good. Um, but during those three times, like, I'm just not a person that can just me personally, like, I don't like just chilling. Like if you put me outside and say, Hey, you don't have to work for the day. I'll figure out something to do to work. Right. And I think that's just, you know, some people are like that. Like, I, I really think like, if you look down my, my family line, like my mom and my grandpa are both like that, like they're always doing something right. And like, I know you're probably the same, like, so there's a lot of people out there that are like that. And it's like, that's just how I was. So I was like, all right, well, I really like, you know, just networking with people that are kind of like myself. So I started getting on calls with people and I realized the stuff that I knew was, you know, pretty valuable stuff. So I just was started just reaching out to people. I was like, Hey, well, you know, um, well, people were reaching out to me and saying, hey, can you help me grow my agency? I see you're doing some pretty big numbers. I'm like, yeah, for sure. And just started slow. Like, I think my first call was like $100 per hour, right? And then I started bumping that up to like 500 to 1,000 and then 2,000. I was like, all right, well, now I got to like build this into something. So I kind of always had it going, kind of always had it on the back end. And I would suggest for anyone that's kind of thinking about that is, you know, don't just stop cold turkey. Like you need income to be able to make your life, to live a happy life. You really do. But like, if you have the time, like start building it into the back end on how you can slowly get into it. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that is such good advice too. Of uh, you know, ease your way into it instead of cold turkey. I think that's just so powerful. Of uh, especially if cash flow is tight or it's going to be tight while you're making that transition. Uh, yeah, because dude, yeah. you can't make if you're not mentally okay up here. You can't make the right decisions in your business. And if you look at the number one, one of the biggest stress indicators in the world. It's finances. And that's why, like, at the time I, I coached, I used to coach a lot of beginners to get started too. We, we strictly just work with business owners now, but at the time with beginners, what I would always recommend with them is like, don't just quit your job and start this. Like you need, you need safety, you need security, because if you don't have that, you're not going to be thinking 
like well up here. And if you're not thinking up here, your business isn't going to be run the right way. Yeah, that's, that's so true. I, um, I, I want to shift to authority income accelerator, man, because you've obviously been, this is your consulting program. You've been, um, just crushing it. I see your ads all the time now, um, on Instagram. And, uh, I, I so for anybody who doesn't know, will you describe for, uh, our listeners, what Authority Income Accelerator is, what it's all about, and who it's for? Yeah, so essentially, Authority Income Accelerator is for coaches and consultants that are looking to scale, right? And the way that it works is we help our coaches turn their Instagram into what we call like a client acquisition funnel, and then run ads to get more clients. And we have a unique strategy about it. And I think that's the thing that's really standing out in the marketplace is, you know, a lot of people try going out there and they do all these different strategies to grow. They try like a bunch of different lead generation. Like they try Facebook groups, they try VSLs, they try webinars, they try YouTube, they try LinkedIn and cold email. And for us, it's like, we don't focus on all kinds of lead generation strategies. We help our clients build one client acquisition system that works, which is essentially like, I kind of like explaining it where we help them turn their Instagram into like kind of almost like a spider web. And then we run ads. So like once people go to your page, even if they message you, don't message you, like they're always going to be in your ecosystem due to like retargeting and a bunch of the back end side of things too. But it's essentially a business growth accelerator for business coaches and consultants. Okay. And uh, and I'm just curious, why why Instagram? What led you down that path? Was it something that you'd had personal success with? You're seeing other clients. Like you said, we have all these different channels, right? We have all these different distribution channels we can advertise on or do cold outbound. Um, how did you settle on Instagram or what was the was there a, you know was there a reasoning behind choosing that? Yeah, for me, I always like just building a brand on Instagram like, I always just personally liked Instagram better than Facebook or anything else. And it just hit me one day where I just one out of, I don't know how it happened out of nowhere. I was just messing around in the ads manager. I was like, all right, well, let me just put up some Instagram DM ads and see, see what happens. And sure enough, like the, the cost per result was literally half of what I was paying on Facebook and they were actually meaningful conversations. So I was like, well, this can go somewhere because, you know, if you think about it, like a VSL standpoint, most of the time, like when you run ads to a VSL, you know, you get people that come in, but they don't have anybody to talk to. It's like, maybe they have a question that they want to get answered. Maybe there needs to be trust, ability, like uh, authority, something to be built to help them convert. And like, for us, it's, we essentially turn like your Instagram into a VSL. And I, the, my favorite part is just that the fact that when someone comes in your ecosystem, they can like book a call with you, but they can also like have a conversation with you inside the DMs. And the way that we go about scaling that is we bring on setters inside our messenger. So like I have, like right now, if you check my Instagram, he's probably having conversations with people that are opting in from like a free lead magnet or a direct offer, like just asking about our business. And I think it just builds more likability and trust in the process because the VSLs and webinars like, it, they used to work really well. Again, I'm not saying they don't, but like, you know, I have some friends that are spending like $600,000 a month on them, but that's the reason it doesn't work for like a lot of people that don't have that type of budget monthly is because, you know, you have like my friend spending $600,000 a month on ads. that's in the same industry as you towards a VSL. It's going to jack up your prices and you're never going to be able to get into there. Whereas the Instagram side of things is a little bit more like personal and you are going to be, we do like attraction based marketing. So you attract your ideal type of clients. Yeah. I, I think what's, you know, really uh, smart about that too, as, a, as you're talking about it is, you know, I think, <clears throat> I, I don't know if you see people picking up followers, but assuming they're engaging and they do follow you, you know, if you've, you know, the algorithm so smart that if you've had a conversation with them, now your story, if you post stories, right, you're popping up almost immediately in their front, you know, the first like four or five that you can see at the top. Whereas if you never have DM conversations with people, they just like start ending up, you know, 75 stories to the right that you never, you know, unless you're watching 10 hours of stories a day, you're never going to end up finding. So I think that's another really great thing. Are you seeing that? I'm super curious. Do you, are you seeing people picking up followers as they go? I know, or is that even a, an aspect of the strategy or is it something that uh, just kind of happens, you know, as indirectly of running the ads? It's more of an indirect thing. I mean, we do camp, we've done campaigns where it's to get followers, but at that point, it's like, 
I don't, I don't really care about followers. I care about conversions. And yeah. what we found was from like, when we're doing good ads, calling out our ideal audience, we naturally get followers. And about half of our booked appointments just comes from my setter reaching out to being like, Oh, Hey, appreciate the follow man. Sick feed. How long you been in the fitness space for? And then it starts a the conversation. And then we just book them from there. And then if it's a good fit, we, we work together. So a lot of our actual people um, that we work with just come from being a follower from an ad. Yeah, dude, I, I love that. And I think the, the, I think you make a good point too of people who maybe even, you know, if someone's been in business for a while, it could feel uh, overwhelming or time consuming to be the one in there DMing, right? And, and, you know, I'm a huge believer that you should at least understand whatever skill you're, you're delegating to some degree, at least so you have some oversight. But the fact that you could bring a setter in to do that, to have somebody who can, who can manage that um, and take that off your plate is, I just think it's so smart. I am curious for you, where do you see the future of conversation, uh, sorry, like conversation uh, marketing going? Because I think with the DM ads, right, it's how do we get people into conversations? Mm -hmm. You know, the Facebook group strategy for a long time was the same thing. Get in my group. Let me just start a convo with you. Do you see that continuing to last for a while? Or are, you, are you feeling like, hey, maybe it's it's something that is going to play out at some point? How are you feeling about the future of, of where conversation marketing is going? I think the future of it is it's the future of the group. I mean, it's the future of the social media because I mean, Instagram, I don't know too much about the Facebook group side of stuff, but I know like Instagram has came out and said like, we're really pushing messaging and we're really pushing building the community. Because if you think about it, these sites, they all say like, we want to keep you on our platform, right? So like when you drive traffic from Facebook to a VSL, they're going to charge you more rather when you do Facebook to like a lead form, right? Same thing with Instagram. If you keep people on Instagram, they're going to reward you better for that. So it's like something, it's a win-win with the algorithms. And that's the other thing that I've realized with doing this, dude, is like, you want to do whatever is the most appropriate for the algorithm that you're working with, because you want to stay on their side. And that's what it kind of comes down to with Instagram is like, they want to keep people on Instagram. They don't want to push people to Facebook. They don't want to push people to um, a YouTube or some um, website or funnel that you have. They want to keep people inside there. So I really think it's a future of it, man. I think the people that jump on board now are going to have a few, huge advantage in a year or two from everybody else. Yeah, it's good to hear. I mean, I think it's something that if uh, if you're listening to this and and especially if you're in the, the coaching consulting space, um, you know, give it a shot, like reach out to somebody like Justin, who, who knows how to, how to get this done, even just start dabbling on your own. If you know the platform at all, like uh, a simple thing could be DM your followers, right? It's one simple thing you could pick up from here. Just start a conversation from there, test that out. Um, Justin, I, I can imagine people, you know, I would imagine one of the, I don't want to say objections, but like hesitancy, some people might have is like, Hey, Justin, I only have 485 followers on Instagram. Is that going to be a big deal? You know, we see you, you've got over a hundred thousand followers. And so naturally it's like, well, of course it's going to work for this guy. He's, he's mm -hmm. got a huge profile. Um, what do you, you know, what are your thoughts on somebody who's coming to you? It's like, I, I don't have a huge Instagram profile. Is that going to affect me? You know, what do you say to those people? It's more of an advantage, honestly. And it's crazy to think about, but it's because yeah. it's that whole like trust and likability thing where Let's say you have like, you know, let's just say you have like 3000 followers compared to someone with like, you know, 300,000 followers. Like if you're opting into someone with 3000 followers compared to 300,000, you're going to psychologically think, okay, well, this person's going to be able to connect with me a lot easier. Like this person with 300,000 followers, they're getting probably blown up every single day. And that's like, why with me, like I'm trying to keep my, I'm trying to keep it under 150 because I don't want to get too high up there where, you know, someone on the other side's like, oh man, like. They just got too much stuff going on. But at the end of the day, it's still like that attraction-based marketing. So you're going to attract the right type of people. But I really think like, and what we tell some of our clients, like if you have a less following, like the best thing you can do is just be like really engaged and just really care and like be very consistent. And that would be the best thing for your advantage. Yeah, it's a good point too, man. I think, you know, honestly, if I ever see someone with like, a hundred thousand followers or plus, I just assume I'm not talking to them like that. They would have someone managing their account. And then I've found out sometimes it's, you know, it's not the case. Like there's, it's actually them. And I'm always like, Whoa, that's, that's amazing. I can't imagine what your inbox must be like, you know, if, if that's the case, but I think you're right. Like if it's somebody with, you know, less than 10,000 followers, even less than a thousand followers, I'm more likely to think it psychologically. 
I probably connecting with them. I probably talking to this actual person. Um, and so I, I, I can see where that would be super helpful too. Uh, without giving away secret sauce stuff, just for, for a little bit of tactical help with people here. So before they start running ads, I'm assuming you'd want them to have some kind of baseline content on their Instagram. I would imagine to make it seem, yeah, I, I can't, I can't imagine we'd run it to a profile that has no picture or zero mm -hmm. videos. Like, let's say someone's like, yeah, I'm really interested in this. I've been doing stuff organically. Um, is there at least a bare minimum set of things I should have? Like, should we have, you know, at least six reels up and even just short content or something where people can get to know us? Is that part of the spider web where people will then consume your content there? Is there, I guess, ultimately, if someone's thinking about this strategy, is there a prerequisite they should have for their profile before doing this? Yeah, so we one of the things we do with all of our clients is help them like before they run ads, before they sell anything, before they do anything is we call it like the foundational period where you have to have the foundation of your profile optimized. Right. And you want to think about it as like, if your ideal client went to your Instagram profile, how would they convert? Like, what would they see? Like you want to take them through that funnel experience. And, you know, the first couple of things off the checklist is one, have a profile photo that actually resonates with you. Like if you're in fitness, don't have a photo of you being fat on the beach, eating a pizza, right? Like you got to resonate with your audience. Next thing, number two is have a um, actual name that is relevant to your name. It's crazy how many people have like, um, for example, Justin 10 X master mindset or something. It's like, just have Justin Saunders. And if you can't do that, like me, some guy won't give me the Justin Saunders name. So I just use Justin J Saunders. It's my middle name. Just keep it as yeah. relative as you can. The next part is you want to have your bio optimized, meaning that you have like a strict call to action or a way that people can get like almost like your resume of what you've done, who you are, and who you can help out within like three sentences. And then from there, what we like to do with our clients is tell them to have their story highlights. We always say have your life, your story, and then your clients, like three things that can be relevant to them. And then from there, as far as like content posting, you know, the algorithm's always changing. So you kind of got to stay up to date. My biggest advice would be just Google on Instagram, like what is the current Instagram algorithm? Because, you know, two months ago, they were pushing only reels and like, that's all we were pushing. And now they're saying, oh, well, it's a mix of both. It just depends on what your audience likes. So my audience likes me talking reels. So like right now we're just posting reels. And when you go about that, you want to think about just posting things that are solving pain points. And the reason you want to do that is because when your ideal client comes to your page, they're going to go through and they're going to start looking at your stuff. And if there's something that psychological, there's something that's bothering them inside their business, like, for example, man, I can't scale from six figures to seven figures. And they see a video that you say, this is what you need to do for scale from six to seven figures. It's going to resonate with them right away. And that takes them down the ecosystem and you'll get people organically just from that strategy by itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And I think it's, it's great advice, man. Go, go look at what the algorithm is uh, focused on right now. And uh, because, you know, it is constantly changing and um, you know, or follow somebody like Justin's content out there, who's talking about this stuff all the time uh, to keep up with the pulse of stuff. Justin, I, I'd love to ask you. So uh, I'm assuming you guys, we've talked about this a little bit, but you guys run this for yourselves and your own business. Uh, I I'm just curious, like, are you finding so coaching consulting? Is this working B2C, B2B? Any like sort of small case studies we could refer to here? So people who are like, ah, I don't know, man, maybe, maybe this only works for huge B2B things. Is this more like selling, you know, fitness stuff? Who are you seeing it working for kind of industry-wise? Uh, and uh yeah, if you have any like case studies, that'd be amazing. Yeah, man. We get that question all the time. And I actually um, have a full thing of case studies pulled up on here because I just got off of a sales call literally like right before uh, the call I hopped on with you. But, um, and I'd be happy to share them with you, but like it's, I'll give you a couple that I'm looking at right now. So like one of our clients, she was in the executive fitness coaching side of things. So like high end fitness coaches, like um, executives, right. And like before working with us, she could only get clients on LinkedIn. She's like, I can't get them on Facebook or Instagram. Like, I just can't find them. So um, we helped her get it down, get everything dialed in, get her funnel up to place. She spent 8K and made $50,000 within the first couple of months of working with us. Um, her programs are only 10K pay in full. So that just shows like you can get the highest type of people on there for the B2B side. Yeah. And we got people like, um, we've got a lot of people in the trading space, like teaching other people how to trade. 
which is an industry that it's crazy. I was telling one of my clients today is like, if you're in that industry, I don't know what it is, but it just blows up with this strategy. Yeah. Um, like one of our clients, trading consultant, um, just was posting reels before, had like a $200 product. We helped him bump up his prices to 5K. And he went from, I think he was doing like $800 a month to he just texted me the other day and said he had $61,000 already this month and yeah. less than $2,000 in ad spend. So his is a little bit more on the um, the crazy side of the results. But I do like saying that because it's um, it's just encouraging for people out there to see that too. Is like, you anyone can do this. You just have to like have the blueprint for it. And, you know, we work with um, trading consultants, fitness coaches, um, real estate experts, local businesses, um, B2B experts. So like, we haven't really found even recruitment. Recruitment works really well. We haven't really found somebody that, hasn't um hasn't worked with this to be honest with you because like you just got to think about if your ideal prospect is on instagram then we can get them you know yeah and i'll say too for for just to to reemphasize this uh or to to emphasize your point so for us at ceo finance academy we you know we sell a financial coaching uh offer and i would say that at least 60 percent of our uh I would say qualified prospects come from Instagram. So obviously we're running on both Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, we were, we're kind of thinking like Facebook will win, you know, there'd probably be more just broader reach. And what's interesting is we're getting six, seven figure business owners coming in primarily through the Instagram side of things. So just another thing we're running them more to a, to a training style, but just to emphasize your point that you, you know, even if you're running higher end B2B services, these people are on Instagram and decision makers are on there uh, doing that as well. So just to back up kind of what you're talking about, as you're saying that, I was like, yeah, that's, that's where a lot of our clients are coming from. Just, I got two quick questions uh, before uh, we, uh, before we kind of end this. And I, I want to sure. thank you for your time. First off, first question, easy. I don't know if this is an easy or tough one, man. I've seen a lot of pictures of you out traveling and you're buff, so you've got like your shirt off. And what I notice is you got a ton of tattoos, man. I got to know what's your favorite tattoo, or is it too hard to choose? Um, I do have a full sleeve over here, so it is pretty hard. I think my favorite one, if you can, it's kind of hard to see right there. It's probably backwards because of the camera, but there's a clock right here. Yeah, and I got this in uh, San Diego when I was living there. I'm in I'm in Tampa, Florida now, but the time on the clock is. 518 and the 518 stands for uh, my birthday which is also my brother's birthday but born two years apart so we share the same birthday may 18th and i think that's like one of the one of the most meaningful ones on here i mean i got a couple but like that's the one that like stands out to me a lot yeah dude that's awesome what a man what a crazy coincidence or i don't know coincidence but you know like uh i don't know man <laughs> timing, timing of that man that's a like uh, you know, that's wild. And then the uh, next question, just cause, uh, you, you know, I think a big part of this is people, you know, business owners are, are hoping one day to have more freedom. Um, you're at a place where you're able to do a lot of cool things. Would love to know, man, I see you traveling all the time. What's, uh, what's one, one of your favorite places you've been to lately? Ooh, man. Well, I'm heading to Switzerland in three weeks for uh, one of my friend's birthdays. Um, he always has like a big ordeal for um, his birthdays and we always yeah. just go and go snowboarding with him. So I haven't, that's the first time I'll be in Switzerland. So I might have to update you on that. But dude, to be honest with you, like I love just going to Cabo San Lucas in Mexico just because it's a pretty quick flight from here in Florida. And it's like every time you go there, it's like they treat you so well. It's so much fun. The scenery there is amazing. So like for me, I'm all about convenience and like for, that's just a quick flight from here to Cabo. And I, right now that's my main go-to. Dude, I love it. And you're gonna have a blast in Switzerland, man. It's been probably 10 years since I've been there, but dude, uh, unreal. I think you're gonna have a blast. One last quick one. What's the next bucket list de destination you wanna go? Like that you like, you, you feel like, man, I just gotta get there and go see you. Yeah, man. I think um, bucket list would probably be Bali. I've never been. And the reason I haven't been yet is before COVID, my business was in like a really solid spot where I could just, you know, travel for like a month and it like this with check-ins and it'd be fine. Right now, I feel like my business, it could still do that, but I'm just really focused on what I want to do. And like, it's just a part of me. So like, it's probably something in the near future in a couple of years, I'll probably do um, just because it's like, 
I don't have to do it right now, but I do want to experience that. And if I'm going to experience it, I want to experience it the right way and not just go for like a week or so. Like I want to actually go for a couple of months and like, kind of like live and go with that because like right now, like I'm, I'm pretty involved in my business. Like I just, I just love it, you know? And like even talking to our clients and, you know, everybody's on like majority of our clients are on EST. Like most are in the U S we do have some in UK. Uh, one guy just joined from Germany and Dubai the other day. So it's like, we're, we're growing a little bit like with other yeah. places like that. But for me, it's like, I just like what I do and like the time zones just work how it is. So that's the other reason I like Mexico is because it's very similar. I think it's what they're like an hour behind or something like that. So everything works pretty well. Dude. I love it. I, uh, yeah, Bali, I feel like you should go for two months anyways. It's a hike to get there. So you might as well stay and, uh, and enjoy it. But Dude, I, Justin, I just want to say thank you so much, man, for for taking time to do this. If anybody's interested, listening, and uh, is curious about the Authority Income Accelerator program, or they just want to know about you and 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 keep up with you, what's the best way for people to do that, and um, or, or how can they reach out to you? Yeah, just check me out on Instagram. It's Justin J Saunders J A Y. That's my middle name, and that's where you'll be able to find out more information about my company. I got a link in the bio with that, and like. The other thing I would say is like, if you're curious about getting started with this, just like check me out. And I post a lot of, I mean, honestly, like the free game I put on my Instagram is probably enough to get you started in the first place. So just check out that and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Cool. I will, uh, if you're listening to this too and, and uh, you're not driving, uh, check the show notes too. I'll have a link to, to Justin's uh, Instagram uh, as well as to the website. Uh, Justin, huge thank you, man. I know you're super busy. I really appreciate your time doing this. Thanks, Will. You got it, man. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode of Building Better Business.